Oh, hi everyone. Welcome back to an, the other special edition episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons. My name is William. My name is Kevin. And this is Geektopia Island. And we're going through the set of Exelon here, giving our thoughts and previews. And I feel like we have a good, decent thought of thinking outside the box. And we're going to be doing the rest of the cards, which is green, artisanacs, and lands. And multicolor, too. There's a few in there. Yeah. It'll be a little longer, but it, it'll be quick. Just, just enjoy it. You can skip around with whatever you want. Yeah, you can go to whatever cards you need to. We don't control your life. But first, we're going to start with the green dudes. Uh, and first, we got a dinosaur. An ancient Brontodon. <laughs> It's just a six. It's a nine-nine vanilla dude for six. Yeah. Probably the amazing and limited because you're just like, ah, I got a big dude. Like, big dude. What are you gonna do about and it? And that's really about it. Oh yeah. The the next one, as a can archer, pay three, reach comes into play, pings your own dude, or yeah, it it triggers and rage pretty much. But then you have it fight another creature. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Dude's real hot actually. Uh, next card is blinding fog. It's just a fog. And creatures that you control have hexproof, so don't, don't target, don't, no, yeah, yeah. You just stay back, just not, just, I, I enjoy this, I, okay, so, I'm gonna go, take, come with me on this walk as well, so, they printed the best green card that I love, which was hexproof and indestructible, heroic intervention, right, then they printed hour of devastation, was like, hey, that card that you thought was awesome is useless, this card destroys our of devastation because it says prevent all damage that would be dealt to your creatures. So that five damage, no longer there. Yeah. You don't care if they have indestructible. So this is definitely going to be my green sideboard all the time. That's pretty good. Yeah. Next one. Uh, Blossom Dryad. Pay three to untap target land. It's limited Trixies, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Since all the flip cards turned into lands, then it can be cute, but man, that's it. Uh, the next dude is a Carnage Tyrant, and this dude is amazing from what I've been seeing. Yeah. A six mana, seven six, can be countered, trample, hexproof. This dude's gonna be hard to answer. If you don't have a, like, a board wipe, I don't expect you to kill this dude easily. Yeah, not, not at all. Like, I hate it that this card's getting so much popularity and the price has jumped up, because there's been cards like this and no one's cared. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I, this is my type of card. Yeah, and, and it's super good, and but now it's, it's, like, it's super expensive right now, and I don't, <laughs> like, I get it, because it's the biggest thing that can't be countered against blue, so. Yeah. Man. And it gets past Hour of Devastation, as we talked about earlier. Yeah, so. it's it's really good, but I don't, it'll be good in standard for dinosaurs. It'll yeah. be a good bomb. Especially with all the, if you play Naya Dinosaurs, everything costs less. Yeah, oh yeah. Turn, it's going to be real good. What, turn four, you can play this dude. The yeah. Seven, six, triple. So, yeah. That's why this guy's so much. <laughs> Alright, next one. Uh, Colossal Dead Maul. Cost six. He, he's, he also has Trample and a 6-6 six, six Dinosaur. But a common, so. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's just a limited bomb, really. Yeah, he really is. Uh, the next card is Commune with Dinosaurs. This card is actually super good. Yeah. I think it'll be good in Limited. It's really good in Limited. I think it could be good in Standard and Dinosaurs for sure. Yeah. But the, the key word with this dude is it gets you a land too. So if you don't get a dinosaur in the top five, you can get a land, which is amazing. Exactly. I it definitely, I think, I agree to everything. Uh, crash the Ramparts for three. Instant speed. Uh, plus three, plus three gains trample in a turn. Limited trip. Yeah, really. That's about it. Uh, Crushing Canopy, I really like this card for a good sideboard tech because mm -hmm. it kills a flyer or an enchantment. I, I just think it's good in sideboard for standard. Agreed. Um, Especially since there's a lot of powerful enchantments in this set. You could mainboard this in limited because flying is so prevalent in limited, but that's really about it. Now this guy I really enjoy and I would play him without being a dinosaur deck. Uh, Death Gorger Scavenger, cost three. When he enters the battlefield and attacks, you get to exile a card from a, a graveyard, correct? Mm -hmm. He has a lot of tech, so... Yeah, so if it's a creature card, you gain two life. Non-creature, it puts a 1-1 one, one until end of turn. I like it. Oh, so it's like a uh, scavenging, scavenging use, use but much. just not as strong. Yeah. yeah. I like that dude. He's pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Deep Root Champion is pretty amazing. I, I really like him for his for his idea because he's two mana and one one. Uh, he's a merfolk, so when you play when you cast a non-creature spell, put a one one counter on him. Dude's hot. Two yeah. mana, 
I'll put this dude out first, and then I'll just control what you do from then on, and he just gets bigger. Yeah. I like him a lot, actually. Uh, me too. I know the Dryads, right, have done this ability before. Yeah. And since he's a relevant creature type this time, I love him. Yeah, I think it'll be really strong, really hot. All right, the next one. Deep Root. And the next one, Deep Root Warrior. <laughs> Cost two, Merfolk Warrior. Becomes blocked. He has Bushido, almost. Plus one, plus one until end of turn. Limited. Yeah, pretty much. that's really about limited only. Because that other two drop that we talked about will replace him in standard, pretty much. Uh, this dude, Drover of the Mighty. I love this dude. This dude is amazing. Yeah. Uh, two mana, hey, Matt adds a bit of mana of any color, and he gets plus two, plus two as long as you have a dinosaur. Yeah. So I have a three, three that can add mana of any color. That's hot. That that's dude's super strong. What, what's better than a, a little, was it, mana? Dork, yeah, one that can beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, pretty that's much. It. Dude's good <laughs> in standard and in limited. Yeah. All right. The next one, emergent growth, cost four. Target creature plus five plus five until end of turn, and must be blocked this turn if able. Limited. I like the art too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the giant merfolk is pretty epic. Yeah. Uh, Emperor's Vanguard. I think it's just a limited card, really. Yeah. I I want it to be good, but it just. It costs too much, I think, for what it does. Exactly. When it deals damage to a player, you explore. Woo! Like, cool. But it can keep man. getting better, or you mana ramp, technically. It, yeah, the cost four is the problem, and it dies to lightning strike. Yeah. Keep I, that in mind, and a braid. I'm just not a fan of it. Limited bomb, though. Like, yeah. Get unlimited, play it's the hell out of it. It's straight badass and limited. All right. The next one. Grazing Whiptail. Cost four. Uh, reach, three, four. Great, limited. Yeah. Uh, the next dude is a Grilling Ride to Illumac. Yeah, this card's awesome. Um, this card is so good. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you how good this card is. Yeah. Um, when it comes into play, you look at the top four, reveal a creature from it, put it in your hand. The beginning of your end step, if you have four or more dudes, you flip it into a Guy's Cradle. Yeah. Which, the Guy's Cradle was amazing, and it, you just get it again. Yeah. Tough. Tap it, and then you get green for each creature you control. So technically, you would have four. Yeah, you'd at least have four. Four, it, four extra so mana that turn. Yeah, it's, dude, it's, the card is super strong, in limited and in standard. Yeah. Uh, the next one and and EDH. That's another guy's cradle. Yeah. For your EDH too. Yeah. Okay. Next one. We'll get to it. Uh, Exali's diviner cost two. Enters the battlefield. Explores. <clears throat> uh, it's great limited. That's about it. Yeah, I think. Exalis Keeper, it's just a limited card, really. Yeah. It, it's the same as the other little dudes, but meh. It's probably the best. It's <clears> actually <throat> five bear with a special ability, so it's actually useful and limited. But, yeah, like you said, meh. Next one. Jade Guardian, four. 2-2 uh, two, two Hexproof the, with Explorers. Oh, no, actually, I apologize. It comes in a battlefield to put a counter on target Merfolk. Yeah. Super great limited. Yeah, it's super good and limited. That's really about it. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, Jungle Dweller, Jungle Dweller Delver, he's really good and limited because you can just keep putting counters on him. I don't see him doing much else anywhere else. Yeah, no, but not really. He's good and limited. Speaking of more Merfolk here, uh, Kamina's Speaker, uh, one drop, one one gets plus one plus one as long as you control another Merfolk or an island. I wish it was like another Wall of Nicotle, right? I wish it said and Merfolk and Island. Yeah. Because then it would be a 3 3 on turn two, which I would love. That would be good, yeah. yeah. Besides that, it could be good. Who knows? Uh, Merfolk Branchwalker, he's just a two, two drop explore guy. It's good and limited, really. Yeah. He is a Merfolk and he becomes a 3 2 for two, so almost the standard if you're down on Merfolk creatures that you need. Next one New Horizons, cost three, Enchant Land. Puts a counter on dude, you tap two mana. Now this seems like your type of card, Kevin. Dude, I love I love mana mana of any color, but I love to play multicolor decks. Yeah. I think this card is amazing. I played it in the in the pre release and it it, it allows you to play two, three drops on turn like four, which yeah. is silly. Because you just get so much mana. Exactly. And it pumps up your smaller dudes that you played on one turn one and turn two. Mm -hmm. So seems pretty cute. I like it. The next one. Old growth dryads, one drop. I think this card is garbage. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's terrible. It's people are like it can be good. No, don't 
don't do it. Don't yeah, play this you, card. You don't want to really mana ramp that hard on your opponents. I mean, yeah, you get a 3-3 three, three for one, but you also give them a free land on turn one. Yeah. Into play. Like, not into their hand, but into play. Yeah, it rampant grows for your opponent. It's... It's got a cool idea, but I don't see it being relevant. Yeah, maybe if it was a 3-4, because you could be like, turn one, play this dude. Their turn one, they lightning strike it. Okay, you're welcome for the land. <laughs> yeah, like, screw this guy. Uh, the next card is Pounce. I really like it, it's just an instant fight. Like, my dude's yeah. my ears, dude. I, I think it's good. I've, I've always liked fight ability. So And it's... with Enrage now? Yeah, the dinosaurs, perfect. And I think it'll be really good in limited. It's super good in limited. Yeah. I think it could be used in standard. Definitely. It'll be good in Dinosaur Standard, for sure. Uh, speaking of Dinosaur Standard, or not Standard, because I want to use this guy, was a Raging Raptors. Cost three? Enrage? Go get it. What, what's the best thing about Rampant Growth? Putting it with legs, pretty yeah. much. Enrage, go get a basic land, put it in the play tap. Thanks. Yeah, cards are really strong. Uh, grab your Walking Ballistas now, because with that dude and Walking Ballista, you're just machine gunning into lands constantly. It's ridiculous. Uh, the next dude is a Ravenous Dagger Tooth, and it has Enrage as well, and you gain two life. It's it's a good saving card, but it's not as strong as the others. Yeah, I think Sideboard, maybe if you're going against Aggro with this guy, because mm -hmm. then you could ping him or block and then gain two health as well. Yep. Now, this guy's going to be a staple for a long time, I think. Uh, pay four Ribjaw Raptor. A four five for four, which is always extremely good stats. And whenever he is dealt damage, draw a card. Dude's hot. Yeah. If you're not playing against black, if they burn him and they have to use two burn spells, you yeah, draw two cards. Really good. He's super good. Super, super good. He's one of the most powerful creatures in the set, I think. Uh, the next card is a River Herald's Boon. Yeah. I love the artwork. It's amazing. Yeah. And you put a dude, put a one, one one counter on a dude and a one one counter on a Merfolk. I, I really like it in standard. It could be good in standard. I like it in limited a lot. Yeah, extremely good in limited. Um, but it depends on how well standard goes for Merfolks to see if it's useful or not. I know I probably will use it main board standard in Merfolk because to put two counters for two on one dude because it's creature and Merfolk, so you can do it on the one the same person. It's so good. I think so. Yeah. All right, the next one, Savage Stomp. Also one of those same cards, just like the one we talked about, but with dinosaurs. Uh, pay three, fight, and put a counter on a dude, but if you control a dinosaur, it costs you less, so it's a prey upon with a 1-1 one, one counter. Yeah, it's pretty good for for uh, limited. Yeah. Could be used in standard. Could be. We'll see. Uh, next card is Shaper's Sanctuary. Um, when a creature you control becomes target spell or ability, you may draw a card. This card is real good in uh, standard. I don't see it doing much in limited really because limited's not as powerful in targeting yeah i mean it happens but it's not as strong and not as prevalent yeah great sideboard card you know they're gonna put in more kill well why not just have cantrips for your creatures pretty much mm -hmm. that's awesome uh next one slice in twain cost four instant destroy target artifact or enchantment draw a card probably a good sideboard then, then that's it. I do believe it's a reprint, too. Yeah, I do believe so, too. Uh, the next one is the Snapping Sailback. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool for limited. Um, it's got Flash, and it's in Rage, plus one, plus one counter. So it, I like it for limited, because it can get bigger. Yeah. I don't know if it's good in standard for dinosaurs, because for five mana, you can play a lot better. For, for me, I will play this card, probably, because I love weird silly d cards like this it has flash i love flash 4-4 four, four flash dude gets bigger uh, i will play this card in standard but probably not anywhere else <laughs> <laughs> uh next one spike tailed sir was it ceratops there we go sorry couldn't see it cost five uh blocks an additional creature each combat great limited yeah it's a really good limited card thundering spineback he is also a great limited card um, Super good limited card. He could be good in standard, but he'd only be like a one of in a dinosaur deck because yeah. he costs so much. But you just make a five, make a three three dinosaur, and the other dinosaurs get plus one plus one. Dude's yeah. real strong. So so technically, he's a five five that makes four fours if he stays on the battlefield. Yeah, like so good. Okay, next one, Tashana's Wayfinder, three two two. This is like the perfect card they showed for Explore because it's. 
three three for three if you get a counter or you get a land. A uh, great limited card. Yeah. Uh, Verdant Rebirth, I think is just a really good combat trick from Limited. Yeah. Um, I don't see it using being used in Standard very much. No. It could, but it's very good combat trick in Limited. Like maybe if you use Mono Green, then straight up use this card because if it dies, then you put it back to your hand and you draw a card, so you get value. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with Kevin. Now this one, I feel like is going to actually make a like a stamp and a stomp into Standard. Uh, Verdant Sun Avatar cause uh, was it sorry five two two green so seven all together when him or another creature you control in his battlefield you gain life equal to his stuff it's pretty hot I played him in my sealed and I liked him a lot yeah because you gain a lot of life with him yeah exactly if he stays on the battlefield you're just gaining life constantly uh, the next dude is a Vine Shaper Mystic he is uh just a good limited card. He gets plus one plus one counter on the two merfolks. He could be good in standard merfolks, but we'll have to see what happens with them. Yeah, definitely great and limited. I, I actually never saw this card at all through the whole pre-release. Anyways, I digress. The next one. Waker of the Wild, four. X and two green, put X, one one counters on target land you control and becomes elemental creature. Still land. Um, eh. It's a good and limited. Good limited, yeah, definitely. Probably won't be played a little. In EDH, maybe? If you throw in a Murphal EDH deck, then definitely do that. Yeah. Um, Wild Growth Walker, when a creature you control explores, put a counter on him and you gain three. It's cool and explore. It's yeah. good and limited. That's about it. Yeah, because you're never going to actually just make an explore deck. So definitely great and limited. Alright, next we're going to go into the multicolor cards here. And our very first one, <laughs> I love this art here. It's an Admiral Beckett Brass. He is the first of the Grixis Pirates. One colorless, Grixis colors, blue, black, red. Other pirates get plus one, plus one, so he's a lord. At the beginning of the end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who has dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. Very, like, the stipulations are heavy, but super worth it. Yeah, you get to take something of theirs forever. Yeah. It, 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 you don't get it back if it dies. It, it's just yours. It's just yours. So if you're playing Flying Man's Pirates and then play this guy, you swing in the air and done. Does it? It has to deal combat damage though to the player. Yeah. So very hard. Uh, but not just him. Any three pirates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one is a big dinosaur, belligerent Brontodon. He's just a big stompy. <laughs> yeah. Um, he he makes all your dudes Doran instead of regular power and toughness. He they deal damage to their toughness. Dude's a four six. Pretty yeah. hot, but. Yeah. I don't see him being played more than in limited. Yeah. Or even maybe EDH, but besides that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's just not not that not that amazing. Um next one. Call the Feast. It's a black white card. Sorcery, get three vampire tokens. <coughs> limited, it's actually really great. Yeah. I played against it and it was kind of rough to fight through. Yeah, card's amazing and limited. Uh the next one is the Dead Eye Plunderers. This card I actually played, it's pretty cool. It's yeah. not like amazing, but it's it's got a good idea. It's a 3-3 three, three for 5, and it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact, and you can pay 4 and make a, make a treasure. So if you're needing to make treasures, you can use it, but I yeah. don't see it doing something in standard. It's cool and limited, but yeah. I don't really see it doing a lot in standard. Uh, besides that, one, art, one enchantment, apologize, that makes it where you win on treasures, that dude will be a staple, but besides that, just yeah. limited. Now, next one. Dire Fleet Captain, Black Red. Black Red usually always have these types of dudes. Uh, swings and gets plus one, plus one for each pirate. Other attacking pirate that turn. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, could be good. We'll see. Uh, the next dude is Gisheth, Sun's Avatar. Sure. This dinosaur is going to be in standard. It's going to be literally everywhere because yes. it's amazing. Um, they took Collected Company and made it for dinosaurs <laughs> and then put it on a giant body. Yeah. It's a 7-6 with Trample, Vigilance, and Haste, and it's got Collected Company for Dinosaurs. Yeah. It's super hot. Reveal the top seven. Or, or the, I think no each, reveal that many, which is seven for him. Yeah, each damage he does, he has Trample, you go and search for dinosaurs and put him into play. Just yeah. straight up, just like, boom, I have more dinosaurs. Yeah, he's, he's super strong. So more often than not, he's going to at least get four or five. Yeah. So you have the so if you play the two ones that make him cost less for six mana, he drops down, 
or if you cheat them into play with other creatures, like the exert one that plops dudes down, then there you go. You yeah. Have this giant monstrosity. Okay. Next one. I love this card. I hope you do too. Hostage taker. For four, blue, black. Uh, well, all together it's four mana costs. It comes into play. You steal an artifact or a creature. Exile it underneath them. And then next turn, if he stays alive, you get to play that card. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. I love this card in the moment I saw it. It's it's a clone that, like, it's kind of a clone. I don't know. Yeah. You take control. Like, you, it's a fiend hunter that you can play the dude that you removed. Yeah. It, it's so good. It's so good. And artifact, too. So, like, they're powerful artifact. You just take it, and then you flip it on your side, hopefully. Yeah, that's my and, thing. And then I'm done. If that works. We'll have to check that out, actually. Yeah. The next one is the other Planeswalker of the set, Hawatli, Warrior Poet. Um, she's real good with dinosaurs. I, I think she's just good in general. Yeah, like, you pay five, you gain life, make a 3-3 three, three dinosaur, and then you deal damage equal to X among the number of target creatures. And they can't block that turn. And so, yeah, the turn you want to win... You just make things not block, and I'm gonna kill you now. And swing, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this this Hawali is real good. It's the other one that's the one about all about dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, this one play red white control. You pump out dinosaurs, you gain three life, maybe more later. Like I yeah, love this I guy. I think she's really strong. Yeah, I think she's she's good too. in standard. She'll be she'll be good in standard. She's really good in limited. Yeah. EDH of course. Yeah. Uh, next one was it Marauding Looter. Costs four, human pirate, raids, and it loots for you. Meh. It's, Standard. It's cool. Or not, it'll be for limited. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, the next dude is a Raging Sword Tooth. I've already heard people talking about this dude and how much they hate him. He's, he's <laughs> amazing. He's a five drop, five five trample. Comes into play and deals one damage to each other creature. Yeah. So it triggers all your enrages, triggers all of that, and it just it kills little one dungs. It's It's just a good dude. Yeah, he's he's pretty good average all around dude. Uh, the next one, Regiosaur Alpha, cost five. Also super good, I think. Other dinosaurs you control have haste, and it pumps out a three three dinosaur, which will be attacking that turn. Yeah, no, this dude, this dude is a bomb in limited. Yeah, and he'll be he'll be good in standard. I think I think he's best place to shine is in limited though. Yeah, like he'll be really good in standard. Don't get me wrong, but. In limited, he is a bomb. I I got one of those in every pre-release, and that dude's just he's just good. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Shapers of Nature is the next guy, and it's just a cool little merfolk that's got pay abilities. It's good in limited. I I don't I don't think it's gonna be good in standard. No, too. But it's, it's too much of a mana sink for standard. I feel like. Yeah, it's it's too long game for standard to be worth it. And next we have Sky Terror. Uh, one red, one white. Flying Menace for two. Two. Uh, I like it. Probably limited. We'll see. Probably later in standard. I feel like it'll be good. Yeah, I don't know what he's gonna do right now. Yeah. Uh, next guy is Tishana, Voice of Thunder. I really like this Merfolk a lot in limited. I I want it to be good in standard, but I think it costs too much for standard. Yeah. I like the idea of it though. Yeah. Comes into play. Uh, you draw a card for each creature you control. It's power tough is equal to the number of cards you control. Cards in your hand, and you have no max hand size. Yeah. Card is super strong in its in its own regard, but I don't I don't know what it's gonna do in standard, if anything. I feel like it's gonna be like EDH staple, maybe. Like, yeah. To be able to keep recasting her and filling up your hand, because in standard, usually you'll never have that many creatures on the field because there's so much control out there. Yeah. I may try to play it in standard, but that's because <laughs> I like big dumb creatures that shouldn't be played. Oh yeah. The next one. Vana, Butcher of the Megan, or the Magen, or the Magan, either way, costs five. Uh, it's a black white card. Uh, Vigilant, Lifelink, pay seven, destroy, pay seven life, destroy target non land permanent, activate this ability only during your turn. I wish it wasn't pay seven, or I wish it was a seven seven with Lifelink. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about this guy? I, I think it's good. I think a lot. I think it's going to be used in standard because yeah. it. It's a Vindicate. Vindicate's never bad. Like, yeah. it's just never bad. Even though it's 7 life, it's, it's not as strong as it could be, but it's still going to be really, really good. Yeah, I, I guess, so you swing for 4, it survives, you gain 4 life. Then technically you're just paying 3 at that point Yeah. to destroy something. Two, and I guess they made a stipulation only your turn, so 
you know, who yeah, knows? I think it's gonna be good. I think, I think it'll be used. I don't think it'll be like game breaking. Yeah, because it costs so much, but it'll be good. We'll see. The next card, she is, however, game breaking. She yes. is the uh, Planeswalker of the set, really. Vraska Relic Seeker. Um, she's six mana for six loyalty. She's just good. Yeah. Like she's good in everything. A limited standard. Uh, commander. Yeah, yeah, I feel like this is the most powerful card in the set overall. Dude, she's so good. She plus two, you make a pirate that protects yeah, her. Like you two. get to protect yourself. Uh, minus three is destroy an artifact, creature, and enchantment, create a treasure token. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Super good. And then minus ten, your life's one. Yeah. Thanks, I'll win now. And I she's just good. Yeah. Like I can't tell you how good she is because she's just amazing in her own regards. Just play her when you can. I mean, that's three turns, so because it's plus two, which is ridiculous. You get a dude that protects her, cool. Next turn, get a dude that protects her, cool. Uh go to one. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculously good. Roska is one of my favorite planeswalkers, if not my favorite, mainly because she's a Gorgon. The yeah. two tribes I love in Magic are Gorgons and uh goblins, so we'll the, see. The two GG's there. Yeah. Man, all right. With that, that rounds out the multicolor set, which is a good, good way to end on that one. Uh, next, we will go to the artist snacks. Mm-hmm. All right. It's uh, cobbled wings too. Uh, equip creature has flying. Equip one. Good limited. Great limited. Yeah. Uh, the next one is a vehicle. Uh, conquers galleon when it attacks. Mm -hmm. Exile at the end of combat. Returning to battlefield transformed. It's cool idea. Yeah. It turns into like a semi trading post. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's no. a cool idea. It's definitely a trap. Even limited, it's bad. Like for them, because it's crew four, which I understand to have a ship town, you need a lot of people to run it. But no, sorry guys. This one, I'm going to try to play and sneak in. Uh, Dowsing Dagger two. Uh, whenever it ends of the play, they get two zero two plant tokens. Okay, be like, yeah, that kind of sucks. A uh, creature gets plus two plus one. That's good. And when it deals combat to a player, transform it, and it becomes a... Oh, can, can you tell me what... Uh, it becomes more or less a Gilded Lotus. Yes. The uh, tap three mana of any color to your mana pool. Gilded Lotus or a Black Lotus that doesn't sacrifice itself. It's, exactly. It's really strong in its regard if it can flip, but it's going to be a little rough to flip. So, like, say turn one you play Flying Mans or the Slither Blade, which is unblockable. Turn two, play this. Turn three, equip if they're still there. You swing, you have four mana that turn left. Yeah. And then turn four, you have seven mana. So it's a weird trade. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool, but we'll find out. Yeah. The next one is a Dusk Legion Dreadnought. I, I just don't like it. Yeah, not at all. I don't like it in Limited. I don't like it in Standard. I've never really liked vehicles to begin with, but <laughs> that's me personally. Not saying they're not good. Yeah. But it could be good in Limited. But for five mana, there's better just dudes you could be playing. It, exactly. And if you're playing a vehicle deck, there's you have the airship for five. That comes down, deals three damage, swings, deals three damage to creature or planeswalker. Like, yeah. This guy is no good. Uh, the next one, elaborate fire cannon. Cost two. Uh, does it untap during your untap mm -hmm. step? Pay four, deal two damage to target creature or player. At the beginning, you may discard a card if you do untap him. That, not playable. I don't. I don't think it's really that no, worth it. That's too many shenanigans to try to mess with it. Uh, the next one is a fell flagship. It is a vehicle as well. Yeah. It's it's okay for pirates. I, I still wouldn't use it honestly. Yeah. But pirates, you can control get plus one, and you can make them discard cards if you hit with it. But it it has to be hitting things, and so you're already losing your other pirates that you. I just don't like it, really. Yeah. No, the pirates you're attacking. You're not going to crew a ship that's only a 3-3 that swings in. And it's a rare, which sucks, so if you get it in a draft or a sealed, it's pointless. Yeah. Makes me sad. Uh, next one, uh, Gilded Sentinel. Cost 4, 3-3, three, three, blah. Next. <laughs> the next is a Hierophant's Chalice. Uh, it's it's okay. I, I It's yeah. good and limited, really, if you use it. It's no chalice or life or death. Yeah, it's it's cool, Pretty much, but yeah. it's just mainly good and gonna be used in limited if that. Yeah. Next one, Pillar of Origins, uh, cost two. Name a creature type, and then it gets to add a, any color of mana to that creature type. Great and limited. 
I feel like standard, man, there's so much mana fixing you don't need it, but limited, it's great. Uh, the next is a Pirate's Cutlass. This one's actually kind of cool for Pirates and Limited. Yes. Because um, it auto-attaches itself to a creature, to a pirate you control. Yeah. And it's plus two, plus one. It, that's the only reason you really use it is because it auto-attaches, but it it's not, like, the best card. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, I know in Limited, I got my ass beat with this card. Because when they have that one-drop 2-2 two -two Goblin with First Strike with a counter on it, and they throw Chalices on it, it's an unstoppable beast. Yeah, a little pirate with cutlasses would be pretty good. Yeah, so definitely limited bomb. Uh, the next one, Primal Amulet. Uh, four drop. Instant sorcery just costs one less to cast. Whenever you cast one, put a charge counter on it, and if there are four or more, flip it. Which, that seems like a lot. Uh, and then it adds one mana of any color in the mana pool. Mana is spent to cast an instant sorcery. Copy that spell. So, can you scroll it? How much is it initially? Four? Eh, how do you feel? I, it could be used in standard if you're playing a, a fun little deck. It'll be it'll be busted as hell in commander. I'll yeah, tell you that right definitely. now, but I don't know if it's going to be good in standard. It's terrible and limited. Yeah. So, if you get a foil one, put it in your EDH deck, you'll win. I, I just, <laughs> I don't know if it's good otherwise. I really yeah. don't. I don't feel like it is. Alright, next. Uh, next dude is a Prying Blade. It's it's just an equipment that equips... Equip creature gets plus one plus oh, and in combat damage you make a treasure. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's not great, but it's okay. Yeah, good and limited. Next one. Sentinel Totem for one. Uh, it is Battlefield Scry, so not too bad. Uh, tap, exile, exile all cards from the graveyard. I feel like this is going to be a standard like sideboard card, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely a standard sideboard staple. Uh, the next is a Shadowed Caraval. Um, when a creature comes in, when a creature you control explores, put a counter on it. It could be good with explore stuff. It's one of the better vehicles, but it's just not it, that good. It's a rare too. Yeah, it's it, horrible. I I'm not a fan of it, but it's only going to be good and limited if used at all. Yeah. I guess they were like, we made uh, the Copter one. It's super good. Let's make all other vehicles suck in the next set. <laughs> yeah. All right, the next one, Sleek Schooner. It's a, it's a sailboat, you dummy. No, cost three, crew one, four, three. This is a this is probably the only good limited vehicle I think because it's crew one and it's a four three, for three. Yeah, that's it. Next, uh, Sorcerer Spyglass comes into play. Look at their hand, choosing any card name. The activated abilities of that can't be activated. It's terrible and limited. Yeah. It could be used in standard, but I, it'll be in sideboard card if anything yeah. in standard. I, I will definitely use it in standard. I mean, it's it stops a walking ballista, which is cool, yeah. but they have to have it in their hand, so hope to God they do. And planeswalkers too. Yeah, like it's real. And the fact that you get to look at their hand, so you can even play it one in the main board to look at their hand and be like, all right, I know what's coming up. Yeah, name but that card. It's it's good in the standard, but I think it's terrible and it's limited. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, next one. Uh, Thermatic Compass costs two. Uh, this is my favorite of all the artifact it's cards. Awesome. cards. One, it's not legendary, so keep that in mind. Uh, pay three, search your library for a basic land card, and reveal it, put it in your hand. If you have seven or more cards, flip it. becomes a maze of it. It's so good. Yeah, and it adds for mana too. So attacking creature comes at you, you tap this card, and it untaps them and takes them out of combat. Super good. Like, you're playing... So I'm going to go on this rank here, okay? Because I've had a little discussions with it online. But you drop it for two. Turn three, you're playing control. They might not play anything because you have, you have a counter. Basic lane comes in your hand. Cool. Four. Fourth turn, you just do it again until you have to stop them from doing anything. It's extremely good. And it happens at the end step, the flip. So if you have multiple, by turn seven, you have just multiple lands, extra lanes that can stop extra dudes. Yeah, and it pulls your lands out of your deck so you don't draw them later. Exactly. It's it's extremely good. It's the best. I don't know about the best, but it's it's really, it's really the good. Best. Uh the next artifact's super good and limited. Yeah, it's a it treasure really map. Is. Uh it's one scry and then put a landmark on it. When you have three landmarks or more, flip it into a treasure cove. Yep. Sack treasure, draw a card. And when it flips it automatically puts three treasures on it, so you get to have ability to draw three cards already. 
the card's really strong and limited. Yeah. It could be good in standard just because you get to scry a lot. But yeah, we'll definitely it, see if it does hit the, the yeah, standard limit. We'll, we'll have to see what it does for standard. I I can't I can't guarantee it being used. Yeah. But I'm not gonna say it won't be because it does scry, which is really good for control. And keep in mind, like on your third scry, you get to flip it. Yeah. You don't have to do anything else, so it's really good there. All right, we've seen this card many times in different shapes and forms. But Vanquisher's Banner costs five. Uh, banner into the battlefield. Choose a creature type. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever you cast that creature type, that will draw a card. So, what, what's that other artifact? That other banner card? Uh, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a long time. But basically the same thing, but you don't get to draw. This is pretty awesome, I think. Yeah, I think it'd be good. Limited. It's super good and limited. EDH. It could be used in standard, but I, I kind of doubt it in yeah. standard. Five drops really hard in standard right now. Like, there's so many great cards out there. Yeah. With that guy, that's the last of the artifacts. Um, we're gonna go up. We're gonna we're gonna venture into the lands. Be done with them real quick. Yeah, well, this, most of y'all know what quick. the lands are. Yeah, um, they most of them are reprints. Uh, but with that, we'll start with the Dragon Skull Summit. Yep, it's just the red black buddy land. That's it. Uh, that's that's what they are. A mountain that's shaped as a dinosaur. Done. Yeah, it it uh, comes into play as long as you control swamp or mountain untapped. Otherwise, it's tapped. And I think this is the best art for Drowned Catacombs. I think the arts on these are better than the old, the old original ones. But Drowned Catacombs has a bunch of pirate ships, buddy land. Yep. Uh, next is Field of Rune. I just actually saw this card. It's it's like a better ghost quarter. Yeah. Uh, you pay two, destroy target non-basic land, and one it controls. And then you and your opponent get to go get a basic and put it in play. Yeah. Which will be pretty relevant with all the flip cards if they get used. Because they turn into lands. So yeah. you can go ahead and destroy them. Get them out of the way. Yeah, it'll be a good way to deal with the flip cards, but I, it doesn't do much in limited, but it's pretty good in standard. Oh, yeah. It'll be good in, in commander, too, because you can get rid of all their pesky little uh, guys' cradles. Exactly. Uh, next one, Glacial Fortress, the blue-white buddy land. Uh, next is a rootbound crag, and it's the red-green buddy land, and it's got a cool dinosaur get roaring off into a cliff. <laughs> yeah. And then Sun Petal Grove, green-white buddy land, a uh, cool little village there. I like yeah. It. The next is Unclaimed Territory, and you just cre choose a creature type, and you can add a mana of any color to for that creature type. I think it's extremely good uncommon land. Yeah, for an uncommon, it, it it's like an ancient ziggurat, and those were amazing, but this actually adds a mana of any, like a colorless for otherwise, so you can yeah. still use it. Exactly. And uncommon, it doesn't come to play tapped, which is one of the best bonuses to it. Yeah. Alright, next one is uh, Unknown Shores. This card is printed in every set, pretty much. <laughs> tap, colorless, pay one, tap for any mana. Yeah. For mana fixing. And then otherwise, just the basic lands. Um, we're not going to go over those, because yeah. you all know your basics. It, it, you know what it is, all the different art styles. Um, and we don't need to go through the yeah, the extra ones there. Uh, with that, that rounds up pretty much the whole set there. I hope you enjoyed our review of Ixalan. Uh, my name is William. My name is Kevin. This is Geektopia Island. And um, and thanks for joining us on the special edition of Cardinal's Cauldrons. I hope you enjoy. And go ahead and check the other videos out for the other colors as well. Yeah, and give us any kind of comments and subscribe to us, all right, guys? All right, let us know which cards you're excited for and what you think you're going to be building. Yeah, write in, write in the comics, comments what cards you're going to be using, what, what decks you're going to be thinking about making, and if you have any ideas for us to play on uh, Friday Night Magic. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, thank you again. Hopefully, you all have a good night. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and keep up to date with our future content. And please join us on our social media and check us out on Twitch.